Emily Temple, Viscountess Palmerston, also known as Emily Clavering Cooper. It's spelled cowpaw and some people do pronounce it this way, but most people pronounce it Cooper. She was born the Honourable Lady Emily Lamb in 1787. Her first husband was Peter Clavering Cooper. Her second husband was Henry John Temple, 3rd Viscount Palmerston. She had five children. George Augustus, he was born the 26th of June, 1806 and died the 15th of April, 1856. Sir Charles Cooper, he was born the 26th of April, 1807 and died the 19th of October, 1875. Emily Cooper, Viscountess of Shaftesbury. She was born 1810 and died 1872. William Francis Cooper Temple, 1st Baron Mount Temple. He was born the 13th of December 1811 and died the 16th of October 1888 and Frances Elizabeth Cooper Viscountess Jocelyn she was born 1820 and died the 26th of March 1880 her father was Peniton Lamb Viscount Melbourne her mother was Elizabeth Milbank. Emily was born in 1787 to Penitent Lamb and his wife Elizabeth née Milbank. Due to her mother's numerous love affairs, her true paternity was never verified and has been described as being shrouded in mystery. The Lamb family had been politically prominent since the mid-18th century, reaching their height of influence in Emily's generation. Her father was made Viscount Melbourne in 1788. At the age of 18, Emily married Peter Clavering Cooper. He was nine years her senior. Lord Cooper had a reputation for dullness, and slowness of speech, which were in marked contrast to his wife's social gifts. A more favourable opinion was that he was a quiet, pleasant man, who was far less stupid than he appeared to be, but preferred to avoid society and politics. Emily threw herself into the Regency social scene, becoming a patroness of the highly exclusive Almax Club. She was noted for kindness and generosity and would do anything for a person she liked. She would even help people she disliked, although she detested her sister-in-law Caroline. When Caroline was barred from Almax Club, a sign of the deepest social disgrace. Emily eventually managed to get the ban lifted. Like many of the society ladies of the age, she had love affairs, including one with the diplomat, Carlo Andrea Pozzo di Borgo, later Russian ambassador to Great Britain. Emily was noted not only for her beauty, but for her extraordinary charm. She was described as Grace put into action, whose softness was as seductive as her joyness. She was undoubtedly the most popular patroness of her club. 
her warmth and charm being a notable contrast to the rudeness and arrogance of some of the other ladies in her club, especially Lady Jersey and Princess Leven. At Almax, Lady Cooper was increasingly seen in the company of Henry John Temple, 3rd Viscount Palmerston, who was known as Cupid at the time for his various romantic dalliances, including affairs with Emily's fellow patroness of Almax, Dorothea Leven, and Sarah Villas, Countess of Jersey. Palmerston was a regular fixture at her parties and salon, and as Lord Cooper sank into a long period of ill health and general decline, Lady Cooper and Lord Palmerston entered into a romantic relationship. This brought Lord Palmerston a Tory, increasingly in contact with notable Whigs, particularly Emily's brother. Of the 1826 proposal for Catholic emancipation, Palmerston said, The Whigs support me most handsomely and were indeed my chief and most active friends. He switched affiliations and ran as a Whig candidate. Emily's mother, on her deathbed in 1818, urged her to remain constant to Palmerston, possibly looking forward to the future, when they would be free to marry. In 1837, Lord Cooper died, two days into the reign of Queen Victoria. This left the way open for a marriage between Emily and Lord Palmerston. Though their age was a cause for concern, as, in the eyes of her family, was Palmerston's reputation as a womanizer. The matter was referred to Queen Victoria, whose approval cleared the way for the marriage. On the 16th of December, 1839, Palmerston was 55 at the time, and Lady Cooper was 52. They set up their home at Broadlands and the union was by all accounts an extremely happy one. During the marriage, Lady Palmerston continued an active social role as a salon hostess as the events were eagerly attended by foreign diplomats. Lord Palmerston would encourage his wife to float his ideas before the assembled guests and report back on their reaction. She could not cure his notorious lack of punctuality, since this was a fault she shared to the full. Queen Victoria, while staying with them at Broadlands, complained that Emily had kept her waiting for an hour for a carriage ride. It was a standing joke in London society that they were always so late for the dinner that neither of them had ever heard of soup. In 1865, Lord Palmerston died and Lady Palmerston followed him four years later. She was survived by her three sons and two daughters. One of her daughters, Emily, was believed to have been fathered by Palmerston and her son, William, by an Italian diplomat. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.